I'm sure that most of you watching this video already know the basics about what Tor is, but quick rundown for the newbies. It helps you to remain fairly anonymous on the internet. Your traffic is routed through three or more nodes, each one having its own encryption layer, so even the nodes themselves can't see the contents of the traffic. And each node is usually located on a different continent, so it makes it really difficult for one or even two or three governments colluding together to de-anonymize and spy on users that are on the Tor network. But despite these mitigations, over a quarter of the exit nodes have been spying on user activity and performing man-in-the-middle attacks on certain communications. And you can see the severity of it over time because it has been going uh, up and down as more and more malicious nodes were added um, on this graph that Nusinu, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, uh, plotted. And as always, links to this article are gonna be in the video description. Now, the exit nodes on the Tor network, they are a very critical piece of information to the whole thing because they are what allow users on Tor to connect to the regular internet anonymously, say if they wanted to go to Facebook or Google or whatever. Um, they are the last hop on the Tor network. Now, this exit node could be run on just about anything because as I'm sure you guys know, these days a server doesn't necessarily mean some big rack mounted thing or a mainframe or whatever in a data center uh, pulling kilowatts of electricity. Tor is just a piece of open source software that can be running on a VPS or it could be running on someone's computer at home. I think even a Raspberry Pi is capable of being a Tor node. And regardless of whatever kind of devices that the owner is using for these exit nodes, they are able to log data on them about the traffic going over them uh, and see traffic going out to the normal internet from Tor. Now, they won't necessarily have personal information about you, uh, at least not if you're giving any. Uh, they won't even have something like your IP address, but they can see what you're trying to access, and maybe they can gather some information about you that way. They're also potentially able to serve malware to your computer by uh, maliciously controlling an exit node. Uh, we saw that with the Onion Duke malware a few years ago. Uh, but typically when black, black hat hackers are doing their thing, uh, the whole point is to make money, right? And that's the case here as well. The main thing that these hackers appear to be doing, uh, according to Nusinu, the security researcher that's been documenting this activity, is that they're attacking Bitcoin mixers. Uh, now, in case you don't know what a Bitcoin mixer is, it sort of works like the Tor network, actually, but for Bitcoin. So you would put in a certain amount. Let's say it's one whole Bitcoin, and that's going to get broken up and traded back and forth between thousands of basically bot wallets uh, that are in this mixer network. And before long, it's going to be so mixed up that when it goes to your destination wallet, it's kind of hard to trace what the origin of that Bitcoin was. And that's basically the way that you launder BTC. Um, so the attacker, they're just watching the traffic that's on these exit nodes. And they've actually got up to 380 malicious nodes under their control at the peak of this um, when it was going on for weeks at a time. Uh, and if the traffic was destined to a mixer, they would attempt to downgrade, they would attempt a downgrade attack by doing an SSL strip on the traffic uh, to try and redirect users to an HTTP version of that site. So then they can see all of the details of that traffic and then they try to change the wallet address that the end user is submitting to one that the hacker owns, so then the mixer is going to send the Bitcoin to them. Now, luckily, the majority of malicious exit nodes have been blacklisted. Um, so right now, there really isn't a significant spike. Most of this was going on last year, and it would only last for a few weeks at a time, but in some cases, they did last for months. Um, but these servers, they would always end up getting shut down because the hackers 
I guess they ended up getting too greedy. They were just adding so many exit nodes that the Tor directory authorities were alerted and they started blacklisting those nodes. Uh, and they tried again just recently at the beginning of May. Uh, that's what this most recent article is talking about that. And then it just goes and connects all the pieces. Um, Cause again, like I said, there's been, uh, he's been tracking this really closely for the past year. But yeah, the hacker tried spinning up 1000 exit nodes which is really just too many. I mean, it got shut down immediately. Like if we take a look at the metrics here for Tor, um, we can see that there's only about 6,500 relays running in total and relays and nodes are the same thing, by the way. Now, only about a thousand of these relays are exit relays. Most people, they don't run exit relays or exit nodes. Uh, and in some cases, ISPs won't even let you run exit nodes. Any illegal activity that goes through Tor onto the clear web is still going to show that it's coming from your IP address that you're running on the exit node. And it could cause you some legal problems and ISPs a lot of the time, they just don't wanna deal with it. So they'll say no. Now, the person that's doing this has not been completely unmasked yet. We're not 100% sure who they are, but they might be a little bit spooked because Nusinu has been on this case for a while. Um, so he tracked down the hosting provider uh, that was being used for these relays, got the email address that was being used to register them, and then emailed the hacker confronting them about basically running man in the middle proxies and SSL downgrade attacks on their exit nodes. Um, now, even though the directory authorities are aware of this issue and they're basically swatting down uh, malicious exit nodes soon after they come online, that is a really manual process, okay? So it takes up a whole lot of time, a whole lot of man hours. Um, they really need to try to figure out a way to automate it. Uh, they're trying to look into some updates that can be made to Tor to basically mitigate this from happening. Uh, and there's also some mitigations that you can do right now to prevent this specific issue from happening to you and just improve your OPSEC in general while using Tor. Um, so the update is probably going to be a plan to just disable plain HTTP and Tor which makes a lot of sense if you ask me. I mean, when your traffic goes over Tor, it's getting encrypted three different times. So doing that just to ultimately make an unencrypted connection to an HTTP site uh, does seem kind of silly to me. Um, the official Tor browser, it does ship with HTTPS everywhere. So that's basically sort of the way that they're enforcing it. But solving the problem with an add-on isn't that great because it's only going to help those accessing Tor from the Tor browser without modifying their add-ons. Um, some people, they're gonna be accessing Tor via the Brave browser uh, or add-ons that let you access Tor from other browsers. Uh, I, like some people, they use Orbot on their phones to access Tor. And none of these methods are going to guarantee HTTPS only functionality. Uh, so doing that might be a good move because the Tor browser for one is the only recommended way to access Tor. So if you're using Brave or whatever else, the warranty for um, Tor is basically void. Uh, HTTPS only mode is available in Firefox. And so Tor is based off of Firefox. We'll probably see it in there eventually. Uh, in some more obscure browsers are already enabling HTTPS only mode by default. So I guess a big scary message that pops up telling you this page isn't secure, that's probably going to uh, get most people uh, to not go and visit that site. Now, as far as mitigations you can do right now to prevent someone from stealing your Bitcoins when you go to mix them for totally legit purposes, uh, for one, you could just make sure that the site you're connecting to is using HTTPS. Um, most sites these days are going to be doing that and it's pretty easy to set it up. So there's uh, really no reason to not use a site that's not using it. Um, and another way that you can avoid this is to just avoid exit nodes 
altogether because honestly they are kind of spooky um, you know you're going to a site that's hosted on the internet the normal way um, luckily when you're using Tor you can access hidden services which is typically what I would use Tor to access anyway um, and when you're doing that your traffic it isn't going to go through an exit node because it isn't actually exiting Tor so if you're mixing Bitcoins, that's already something that you really should be doing on a dot onion site. So, you know, you should only do it on those dot onion hidden services. But that's it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and stay safe from those malicious exit nodes.